Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about DDD, Domain Driven Design, and what that is. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is DDD or Domain Driven Design? And the short answer is that it is a way for you to do uh, to pre create an architecture in your code base. It's a code base level architecture. Not necessarily, it can actually work in, on, on a higher level. And we're going to touch on that as well. So domain driven design is a concept that was popularized back in the early, like back in the Java days where Java and C sharp pretty much ruled the world. They kind of still do, but they rule the world more than they do today. And the basic idea is very simple. You are pretty much encouraged by the principles of domain driven design to to model your application logic, like your different models and the different things that are going to store data in your system in a common language with your business requirements. Let me explain. So when you work with domain driven design, usually what is going to happen is that you go and talk to a stakeholder who has a need for you to build some type of software. Let's say for the sake of argument that you're going to build a web shop. And when you're building a web shop, the first thing that they're going to say is that, okay, so we need to be able to go and like, upload some products to our to our product pages and then the user needs to be able to click on a product and add that to their cart and then place an order and yeah that's pretty much it now notice the nouns that they just used all right so they had a product they had a user that we had a cart of some sort and then we had an order those that's for four nouns that describe the different entities that exist within the system, if that makes sense. And that's what domain driven design, the first part of it is all about. It's about identifying nouns that will create a common language between you and the stakeholder, the people, the business people, because the, right, the business people, they don't know what a class is. They don't know what a method is. They know what, don't know shit about for loops or anything like that. But if you say that, oh yeah, we need to update our user models because the user now has an email as well as a name, they will understand that. They will understand that, oh, okay, we're talking about user information here. And that's what that's the heart of domain driven design. So that you don't call your the thing that like the data structure that holds your user something like something weird, like I don't know, shampoo bottle. If you call the user model a shampoo bottle, it's gonna be confusing as fuck for the people who are you're going to talk to. So trying to really listen to your stakeholders and the domain experts, because sometimes you're not the domain expert, they, they might be the domain expert, and then you really need to talk to them. As an example, if you're making some really advanced, say, medical system or something like that, well, you don't know half of the stuff that they know about medicine, maybe, or science or stuff like that, chemistry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, them using these nouns, it may, I mean, it, because your system is going to you, operate on all of these pieces to make some type of value for them. It's really important that you create the right names for all your models so that you can learn from what they're saying. Because if they're saying that, oh, if you do this and that, you need to have like this interaction work in a certain way, right? So that's like just the basics of what domain driven design is about. It's, and most people, what's funny about it is that most people do this, most programmers do it in some fashion. Like it's very rare that you have programmers who don't create a user model or a product or a, like an order or something like that. You will create this even if you don't study domain driven design. But the second part is a little bit trickier and that is where do you put your in domain driven design, we call it the action logic, but it doesn't have to be that. But, but where do you put your business logic? This is where it gets a little bit trickier. So business logic is just the logic that someone can perform. Let's say for the sake of argument that we have this website that sells products. Well, the action or the logic associated with taking a, a user selecting a product and putting that in their basket that's an action, that's a method, that's a logic, that's logic, that's something that's going to happen in the system. And that's an interaction between two different entities. Who is going to be responsible for holding that information? Like the, that function that is going to be able to put the product in a basket. Is the user going to have like a method that takes in the product and the basket and then puts them together? Should the product be able to know how to put themselves in a basket or should the basket have the logic, oh, 
I get a product, I should put that thing in my, in, put that inside myself, right? Or should, you know, th th this is where the question arises, right? So in domain-driven design, the argument is that instead of coupling this logic to your domain models, in other words, you don't, instead of putting all of this business logic inside of your model, such as the user and the product and the order and like basket and so forth, you create a service layer. You create an entity that represents an entity that understands how to perform that action. An example would be that let's let's say that you have a you have a uh, purchase service as an example, and the purchase service all that service does is that it is like it's an it's an it's a class in of itself. It's not something you save to a database. It's not something that you persist in any way. It's just a wrapper that holds all of the domain logic for a specific piece of functionality within your system. And then all you need to do is to say that okay, well, you have this this user here. They want to create they want to create a basket and they want to put that product in that basket. And by decoupling these things, for like the action logic and the, uh, and the model, you avoid creating a situation where you don't really know where to put, put what. You just create an entity or like a, not an entity, but you create a wrapper or a service that holds the logic for how to perform a specific action. That makes things very flexible because, it, trust me when I say this, if you try to figure out where to put all of these these things that you your system is going to be able to do on the model, it's just a matter of time before it gets really complicated. You get circular dependencies and you might create what we call a god class. And a god class is just a class that can do everything in the entire system and it's super complicated. The user is one of my favorites, or usually one of the favorites things, uh, favorite models for creating this situation because a user, as you can imagine, they can do pretty much anything in the system. Like all these actions that you can take in a system is usually tied into a user because you're building the system for a user. So in theory, you could argue that, oh, the user should be able to send an email or like uh, place an order, like all of this stuff, right? But in domain-driven design, you decouple this and instead you think in terms of services, uh, services and domain entities. So you have a service that performs the action such as creating a purchase. And let's say that, you know, you might have an order service that places the order, which is responsible for saving the order to the, like putting to, taking the product from the basket, putting it in an order of some sort, saving that to the database, sending an email, a confirmation email to the user and do all of these things and different services can depend on each other such as you might have a service for or you may have an order service and that service depends on the email service because the order service doesn't really need to know how to send emails it just needs to be able to know how to save an order but you also need to send that email so maybe if you include the email service through composition into the order service, then the order service can take care of the piece that is saving the order to the database and then it can just call the email service to do that. Now imagine if the email service was on the user, well then the user needed to be involved as well and you don't really want that because it doesn't make any sense that the user should be able to send an email. But having a dedicated service that knows how to send emails makes things a lot more flexible. So what I want you to take away from this is that the the basic teachings of domain-driven design is just that you try to create a common language between the code and the business. So you try to name all your models in, a, in, in, uh, in the same way as usually the way to think about it is that when you talk to a non-technical person and they try to describe what the system is supposed to be doing, listen to the words that they are using to describe the different entities and name your models accordingly. So that it makes, so that when you talk about a model and they talk about a model, you're talking about the same thing. You have a common understanding of the thing that you are talking about. Because otherwise it can get really complicated if you're calling things one thing and it feels unnatural to the other party because, you know, you're not saying the same thing, but you mean the same thing. And the other part of it is where you actually put all your action logic or your business logic. 
And domain driven design pushes this idea to decouple this model log, like the model from the actual business logic and create usually a service or a helper or some other type of uh, some wrapper that holds all of the different pieces of logic that, uh, and operations that can take place within the system. So that these services, they usually just consume the models, but the models stay dumb, if you will, without having a lot of complicated business logic. And by doing this, you avoid creating a situation where a model is doing something that it shouldn't be doing, or it becomes a god class that becomes a really, really complicated. So think of it as separating the data from the action that is taking place. Have a great day.